Before suture placement, one must calculate the size of the implant's bed. A space equivalent to the implant's thickness is measured on both sides in order to sink the buckle into the sclera. A 5 mm high and 2 mm thick implant will necessitate a 9 mm bed. By removing a correct indentation, one can check the double thickness plus height necessary distance. Sutures are passed perpendicular and not parallel to the implant. Many reasons can be found. If the sutures are parallel, the knot will be tied over the implant to avoid loosening. This will create a rigid system at the final tightening. The traction forces will be perpendicular to the intrascleral thread. These are tearing forces and tearing might happen. If the sutures are perpendicular to the implant, the knot will be tied over the sclera. A triple loop will block it and this will facilitate the final adjustment. Forces will be tangential or parallel to the intrascleral tunnel. These will be folding forces, not tearing ones. The first example is that of a localized limbus parallel indentation. Anterior suture is at the anterior margin of the implant's bed. It must have a short bite. Posterior passage must be radial in the same axis. This will be made easier by depressing the sclera and reversing its shape with the surgeon's other hand. This displays the surgical area and the suture is longer. The distance between the two posterior bites will have to be larger than between two anterior bites to keep the sutures in a radial axis. Even a short buckle necessitates two U-sutures on both sides of the tear. This will strengthen the buckle. If an over 90 degrees treatment is necessary, a third double suture has to be placed. Positioning, suture lengths and axis must be homogeneous in order to achieve a satisfactory and consistent result. This must be done carefully and slowly. The hammock is ready for implantation. A triple knot will be prepared on every U-suture. This will be facilitated by placing the needle holder open flanges against the sclera.
this triple knot will not loosen. Fundus control is possible without tying the knots. An additional traction on the sutures is possible if needed. No parallel sutures, no compressible material will ever be used for fold encircling procedures. If the implant is deformed, there will be no fold and the longitudinal axis of the globe will increase in size. With incompressible material and perpendicular sutures, there will be a scleral fold and the axis will be shortened. This posterior fold is achieved through longer interscleral sutures. Since the traction forces increase the fold, this has to be created at the posterior part of the eye in a detached retina area. Therefore, the posterior suture has to be 2 or 3 millimeters long. Vortex veins must be protected. Subretinal fluid release will be done in the intervortical avascular zone to create more available space. Progressive tightening of the knots will create indentation plus fold. Radial indentation has similar principles.
sutures are parallel to the limbus. Intrascleral tunnels are short. All sutures axes are parallel. The inferior edge of an inferotemporal disinsertion is nearly always at the same place in the inferior rectus insertion. It is difficult to indent so anteriorly. The temporal end of the muscle insertion can be removed to allow a 1 or 2 mm additional space for a correct buckle placement. Superfluous material must be removed even if PTFE colonization will prevent rejection. Indentation is sufficient. The knots can be tightened. Encircling bands and fold encirclings necessitate two sutures per quadrant, eight U sutures. End-to-end -end closure without traction. An X knot will improve apposition.
It will not create over thick buckling and the implant can be rotated. No centripetal traction must be present before tightening the last knot.